for the moment at the, uh, the virtual interview and we got one person here where oh no no one believe it absolutely at all I'm talking about Sean B one of the best one of the hugest one of the greatest or the greatest host when it comes into music and he is uh, the host of the BBC One Extra uh, live session music. Hey, that, that one of the best interview we can get for the year because we have the man here in live and living color. Shana B, welcome to the music, brother. How is blessings, this, blessings, 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 blessings. Yeah, man, it's a pleasure having you, man. Thank you very much for taking this interview. And you don't imagine the, the pleasure. And uh, we are very excited to have this conversation with you, brother. It's, it's, it's my pleasure, trust me, it's my pleasure. <laughs> thank you, thank you for accepting this invitation, for sure. It would be a nice experience with you here so in the music. And we want to start with Shani B in the beginning. In which moment of your life you start passionate or love music? I've been, I've loved music from I was a, a kid, to be quite honest with you. Music was always a, a big thing in my household with my father. Um, my father comes from Dominica, my mother comes from Jamaica, so I grew up oh, on a wow. great mix of Caribbean music from the likes of Mighty Sparrow, Lord Kitchener, Arrow, all these kind of art. And then my mother, she 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 really liked like John Holt. Right, John Holt was really her artist, to be quite honest with you. So I grew up on a great mix of Caribbean music, and then I had my own love of music that was hip hop at the time. So that was like the late 80s, and so that was like the whole sound that we was listening to in the UK at the time. So I'm talking about people like Eric B and Rakim, Public Enemy, Stetsa Sonic, those kind of artists. But it was people like KRS-One that, that had like hip hop mixed with like dance style sounds that really intrigued me when I was a lot younger. Very wonderful. I, I would like to, I, I got to have a question and it's curious for me to uh, ask, uh, how is the sensation What's the sensation you feel to know that you are one of the greatest uh, TV hosts coming to music and, and to meet so many artists around the world? Hey, how is that sensation? It's a dream come true. Um, like one of the guys that people will see me rolling around um, Kingston, Jamaica with um, when we're doing the sessions and doing the interviews, he, he goes by the name of Winji. And I've known him from we was at the age of like 13, 14. He came from Jamaica. He came to the estate that I was living on. And his house was virtually across the road from my bedroom window. So they, he, he used to hear the music coming from my bedroom window. Mm -hmm. And it was him and his cousin that introduced me to dance our music wow. properly, like in the late 80s, coming into the 90s. And we lived the dream. We lived the dream every day when we're in Jamaica, like um, meeting so many different people and um, kind of like, Definitely, when we met you with Buja Banton, like everybody was gassed that yo, you've done the first interview with Buja Banton. And when I drove out, I looked at Winji and was like, can you believe that we've just interviewed Buja Banton? I remember listening to Buju, Batty Rider, um, Love Me Browning, What Like a Champion. When these records first came out, we used to be out on the corner of the block where we used to live. And now we have got the first interview with Buja Banton since he's been released from jail. Yeah. So for, for me, that kind of encompasses everything about my journey. I genuinely, I can't believe it. Like the life that I'm living, I genuinely can't believe it. I can't believe that I'm requested from some of the artists that I grew up listening to and they want me to interview them. Like for me, that, that blows my mind every day. So it's, it's literally a blessing from above. So I don't work. I just do what I love and the same passion that I had when I was 15, 16, 17, just starting out in this music, is the same passion that I have to this very day. I absolutely just adore everything that I'm doing. For sure, we feel it and, and we see it the way you're talking and you express yourself and what you're doing. You really notice that you really do it with much, much love. We know that music journey is not easy. It's a road that you have to wake up every day and 
do it with much love and constant and persist every day, every day. Come to us an experience that you will say, well, and through this certain part of my life, I passed a difficult moment and I will when want to retire from music. You pass any experience that really make you think one or two times to retire from making music or be a, a DJ. Definitely not, like 100% not. The, my music, my music is my comfort. Um, if I have a real bad day, if somebody upsets me, if I have an argument with my woman, my son is not do, doing the greatest at school. Once I go into the studio, I forget about everything at all. I was once told when I was younger, like, let music be your best friend, because music won't break your heart, music won't cheat on you, music won't lie on you. So my, my genuine nature towards music is that 100%. I would never lie on music because music is my comforter. Once I'm in my studio, because right now I'm in my studio, I'm surrounded by my records and everything right now. And once I'm once I'm in here, and I spend so much time in my studio by myself, once I'm in here, I'm a happy man. I don't need to see anybody at all. Once I walk into a radio station, once I once I go into a stage, like when I when I go into a stage and I'm performing as a DJ, I literally lose myself. Some people don't even recognize that this is the same guy that was just sitting over in the corner, very quiet, because what some people don't realize is that I think I'm pretty much a very quiet guy at the best of times, and I'm very, I like to write, write solo, so I don't have many people around me, I don't have an entourage, 90% of the clubs that I go into, I will go and do them myself, um, I even set up myself to be able to record my interviews, video my interviews by myself, I don't have an entourage, my only entourage that I have is music and God. Wonderful, wonderful, excellent. Uh, we have seen that you uh, interview from, from Buro Bantan, go right up to Morgan Heritage, all the way, all the history. Uh, what we would like to know, how you do to select or how you do to choose that next one on the, on the list to be interviewed by you? It's not a choice, you know. Um, if I be honest with you, I just try to do as much as possible. I try to lend my hand to as many different people. So if you think about it, people like Skilly Ben, Coffee, Shensia, Governor. Okay, okay, well, we got no local interruption in at the signal, so we're going to do a nice back to back from Shani B. And we're going back with this wonderful interview right here with Shani B. in at the music. Let's go. Shani B. Says Dance Talk Sessions with Shoney B. Now I hope the camera them have enough tape. I hope set, we, we, we can't run out of no space because this could go on all night. We have some originals here from right to left. Bura Bantan, Peter Metro, e Mouse, and Major Mackerel. This is why I love Dance Hall. Yo, on the fair track, please. Bang bang, bidi bang bang, bidi men. Any mini bang bang, bidi bang bang, bidi men. Any mini bang bang, bidi bang bang, bidi men. For what? He's on the mark. Yo, run that again, you know, we originate the thing, you know. Yo, and the 80s artists, them are we, you know, out of the big work. Watch it, man. Yeah, yeah, me. Watch your mouth. Stay with it. I was do them, I was do them, them, them. But I was do them, I was do them, them, them. Me no no ow, I me no no ow ow. Me no no ow, I me no no ow ow. Me say me love a fit, me virgin girl. Me say me love a fit. He's a come on more time. Yes man, yes man. So we the right back here, we're trying to do right here, can you come? We had a, a little interruption, but we the back here on the list. Same way. Yes sir. Yeah man, yeah man. Hey, hey. Make we, make we, make we jump in at this BBC One Extra thing. How, how does this band, uh, where the idea come out from?
from and and because it's huge nowadays uh, you see it all over the year all over the world and there is a lot of artists i think is the is the is the um, site where the most amount of artists you can get uh, to see on you and youtube so uh, tell me a little bit about it you get me? Yes, my brother. Johnny B. Jamaica, UK. Well, you said veteran. Go on, okay. Daddy. I am a daddy, you know. Okay, let's go back with the video. And we are directed right to try it at the couple of Johnny B because this is a very wonderful interview where everybody has to get access to and see a little bit and know a little bit more about this wonderful DJ. So let's go to it. Me a old road boy, still have it in my cranium. Ram up your dance and cock up your stadium. Me no borrow ice and me no beg platinum. Be a fit that cash and left my pull them for rock it up. Yes, I run it back to Shani B. BBC One Extra. Original people do original things in. So watch this, Baba Hoon, Baba Hoon. Yes, Shani. Are you there? All right. So I was asking you about the BBC One Extra. Where this band? Who, whose idea it was? Champion. Well, you know what? When BBC was created in One Extra was created in 2002, um, the person who was actually my manager, he's a St. Lucian guy. And one of these things was to make sure that Caribbean culture was represented properly. And what people don't know is that One Extra has been going to Jamaica since 2003. Wow. And we've been doing Trinidad Carnival. We've been doing radio shows in the Caribbean. So people like Shano, um, Elaine, um, these kind of artists, I remember interviewing them in 2003, but then obviously with technology getting greater, and then when I took over the main dance hall show, I think it was around 2014, one of the things that I saw happening was it was all about visuals. And I could see that YouTube was definitely growing. So the concept of doing the videos was always there. I can never ever say that I can take the claim or the credit for doing the sessions or the videos and the performances and freestyles in Jamaica. But what I will say is that if we went to Jamaica, we go to Jamaica for five days. Some people will come back with 10 videos, 10 sessions, freestyles. I'll come back with 30. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would do. I, I would, it was my idea to say, let's get the Rough Cut band in Tough Gong Studio, put them in there. I know they know majority of the rhythms, and then literally we have the artists on a carousel. Our out. Half out, and then you're out again. Literally, we just kept spinning it round, spinning it round. So I, it was just my energy and my eagerness to work has, has really grown this platform to where it is. I, and yeah, I just love to work. So when I'm in Jamaica, I work like 16, 17 hour days straight. And I tell people, don't try to keep up with me. You don't please don't try to keep up with me because I'm a beast. I'll take my mic and my recorder and my camera and I'll hit the road. Don't try to keep up with me. Even artists, I remember Assassin said to me one time, Shani, don't make them kill your Jamaica with work. Big time. That's nice, that's nice. Is it really feel feel that nice vibe? Shannon, you hearing us? Shannon. Okay, I'm okay, I think we are keep on with the same video they run or one video for them they run and then oh, uh, we're coming back with Shani B right here. If you see the cut and they come back, but this interview is very interesting, so let's get to it. Okay, so we are back with Shani B. 
want new strap. She want new a jambangle and hat. Kiss me good sight. She want new one back. Miss a girl, what make you want everything that is new? Only thing I can afford is a pair of shoes. Me give her money, but the girl still a screw. Why don't I? I just like a patoo. I screw up her face like a crush kalalo. Miss a dry that nasa. I will you want try for do. You want me to get in your two? I make it black and blue. She said, no, no, stitchy. No more than me at all. You just made me and you want to make me ball. The girl foot big and the girl foot tall. She wear size 10 and she want to look small. Go buy size 8 and when it's easy, she a ball. But girl, wear your size. Young girls, wear your size. And they come back before. I'm sure we will continue with this interview here. So this evening here, so in the music, Shani would I want to ask you, how is the movement of the dance, reggae, soca, all the Caribbean songs in the UK? The movement is massive. The movement has never changed. It will never change. Caribbean music is the foundation of all music. The Caribbean music has so much energy, so much influence. That is the most important thing. You listen to any of the UK music, drill, grime, garage, you listen to any of that, you hear elements of reggae and dancehall in it. You listen to Afro beats, it's undeniable that you hear the influence of reggae and dancehall in it. You listen reggaeton, anything that you listen to, you hear the influence of reggae and dancehall in it. So for me, the, the 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 music is always strong. It's just that the econo the economics of the music needs to get better. We need to get our streams up. We need to get our numbers up. We we see the growth on YouTube, but where we really need to see the growth is in Spotify, is in um, Apple Music, is in the streaming. That's where we need to see start seeing the start seeing the growth. But when it comes to the influence of the music. We will always be number one. The Caribbean will always be number one. Hey, that's wonderful, man. That's wonderful. Well, you don't, you don't know say, this question have to be made. My one of my hugest uh, hero in music is Boji Bantan. You know, he is uh, from he started out in music until now. He 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 is he's a legend, an unstoppable artist. Uh, how is it? To, to be in connection with he, to do an interview with he, to have him beside you right there, sharing the same space. How was it? I tried my hardest not to get starstruck, but <laughs> there is times that it's like, damn, did I really just sit down with this man? And would you dealt with me like an old friend from a long time? Sit down. What you want for drink, Shani? <laughs> and a bottle of water. What do you mean water? <laughs> you want for drink a dragon? I had to look on my butt. I had to look on my producer and be like, can I have a drink with Buju? <laughs> you know what I'm saying, guys? Work, we're working. So for me, sitting down with Buju was definitely one of the highlights. Buju, I think it's to, it's the three Bs. Buju, Bounty, and Beanie. And I can say that I've interviewed all three of them. I can say that I have a good relationship with all three of them. If there was ever a checklist to tick off, those are the three legends of dancehall music yes. from my era, 100%. I think the only other one that I really would love to be able to sit down with and have a, a reasoning with, even though I have done it before over the phone, but I would love to have a sit down face to face with Shabba Ranks. That wow. for me, Shabba Ranks and Supercat, as a matter of fact, Ooh. those two, that will be, that would nail it. And obviously, Movado and Vibes Cartel. But when you talk about 90s dancehall, you have to say Buju, Beanie, and Bunty. So for me, it's incredible to know that I've, I've achieved all three of them. Wow, that's nice, that's nice. For sure, we won't say goodbye to you before give us a nice advice. God, we know you are one of the hosts that really, um, and we really admire and we see how you handle all the artists them in your interview. Which advice you can give to us to, what is the base or that fundamental thing that the host have to be to connect to an artist? I would say is stay true to the music. Stay real to the music. Don't lie about the music. Don't take no backhanders. Music will always 
brain. As long as you stay true to good music, you can't go wrong. That's what I did. What I loved, what I wanted to see, what I wanted to hear, that is what I put out there to the people. And thankfully, everybody kind of has the same kind of similar taste as me. I am always a fan first. As a broadcaster, I don't get myself lost in that fan mode, but I'm a fan of the music first. As long as, I, as, long as you're always a fan of the music, you will always be right. Wow. Yes, man. Big up, big up all those words you're sending down. All, all, love you. Fling down power, we said, Jean Paul. You know, lovely. And uh, with all the respect, we want to tell you that we honor you and respect you in this job because you are the greatest. All right? So thank you very much for this interview. I appreciate that. I, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And you guys keep keep doing the work and you know what I mean, putting it out there. Go we're, we're all in this together. It's not one man that can do it, it's teamwork to make the dream work. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you very much, Shani. Have a rest night. And for here, we will continue here. So in other music, we 